Hi guys, I'm Joanna Zaremba. I'm a movement and yoga teacher, a mindfulness teacher, meditation teacher, and a coach. Basically, I'm here to help you feel better in your body, in your life. Um, and I'm doing a series of videos on resilience, and this is one of them about movement. So, some of us kind of have a love-hate relationship with moving our bodies, but I want to invite you to kind of just open to the fact that moving your body can have so many benefits. Um, it can really help you to get into the present moment and arrive right here and right now, um, and we'll do that in just a moment. It can help to shift your energy, um, maybe give you energy, help build that up a little bit. It's great for a reset. So with that being said, I'm going to lead you through a short movement reset that I hope will um, help you with whatever your goals are and uh, again, get you back in your body in a caring way. So let's just get started by closing our eyes. So just close your eyes and maybe just fiddle around a little bit and get comfortable and just take a breath or two here. Maybe as you're exhaling, see if you can start to notice the ground beneath you. Feel that support. Maybe notice if your weight is even on both legs and see if you can maybe even that out a little bit. And as you exhale, can you just let go of whatever you need to let go of? And just breathing in some grounding energy, helping us arrive. And breathing out whatever we need to let go of. If you'd like to set a little intention for a time together, now's a great time. There's no pressure, but I often like to set an intention about accepting and loving myself. When you're ready, open your eyes. All right, so we'll get started. I like to just get the body moving a little bit to start. So we're just going to do just kind of a little bounce to start. So you can leave your heels on the ground if you want and just allow things to move. That's totally fine. Or you can lift them up if you want to. And just kind of see how that is. If you want, you can let your arms kind of go too. The benefit of the bounce is it does kind of just reset things. And it kind of makes you want to smile, put on some music if you want to. And just breathe. Just do a little bit more of that. Slowing it down and just pausing for a second. So we'll do some pauses throughout so that you can just have a chance to soak up what you're feeling, to notice it in a way that maybe you don't normally do. So just take a moment if you want to close your eyes, I will, and just feel how that changes things in your body. Ah, feels good to me. I feel a little bit tingly, a little bit more energy kind of flowing. So we're going to start with just some arm circles, just to get our upper body moving a little bit, and we'll kind of flow through the body, do a little bit of a reset all over. So for the arms, just take your arms up and back and around in big circles. There's no perfection about this, and I invite you to, I'll give you some, maybe a starting off point for uh, moving your body, but feel free to pause the video and do something that you enjoy. And let's start making the circles a little smaller and a little bit more out to the side. And let's start speeding it up. So we're just going to speed it up a little bit. If you want, you can take your palms up even and see how that changes things. Um, helps a little bit with kind of posture. So even faster if you can, just breathing. Get things kind of warmed up and moving. And often our upper body really could use that. And now we're going to slowly make the circle bigger. Kind of return to where we began for just a couple more. And pausing. And just let it shake out. Maybe take a breath and just notice what you feel. Hmm. Feels good to me. Now let's cross our arms. So we're going to do a little bit of motion for our backs. So and I'm going to turn to this up just so you can kind of see. Again, there's no perfection. Just kind of do what you can. See what feels good. We're going to first just start tucking the chin and rounding forward. We're going to round all the way through the low back. And then just come up. And just rounding forward. And you can breathe in whatever way feels good. You can inhale up. Exhale 
crunching forward. We're just trying to move our spine in some different ways. So now we're going to round forward, and then we're just going to twist to one side in that kind of rounded position, and then twist to the other side. And we'll do it one more time each side. You can feel maybe your tummy, your abdominal muscles are kind of working to keep you in that position where your, your tailbone is tucked under. And then we'll roll up. Okay, we're going to add on to that. So we're going to round forward, twist to one side, and now we're going to lean over to the side and wind all the way back. Over to the other side, and then rounding towards center. Again, there's no perfection. Let's try the other way. We're rounded forward, let's twist to the side, lean over the side and go all the way back, kind of extending all the way through your spine, over to the other side, and coming forward. And let's come out of that. And just shake it out a little bit. Take another breath, just see how that felt. Hmm, oh, it felt good for me. Let's do a little bit more kind of upper body to get us warmed up and, and awake, get that reset going. So we'll inhale our arms up, and then we're just going to exhale to one side. We're going to do it this way to start, and then we're going to do it another way to start, uh, in a second. Inhaling and exhaling. So kind of getting the motion. You can slide your hand down if you prefer. And this time we're going to inhale up, and I want you to really reach through this, these fingers. As you lean over, really reach, 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 and you're going to feel stretch all the way down, maybe down your opposite leg. You can let your head relax if it feels good, and just really reach, reach, reach. And then inhaling back up when you're ready. Exhaling over, and reach, reach, reach as high as you can, and you'll feel that nice stretch through the side of your body. We'll do it one more time, a little different. Inhaling up, and this time as we exhale over, let's imagine we're resisting maybe really thick mud. And so as we go over, we're gonna feel a little more activation in our core. So we're just resisting, you might not go as far because you're feeling that resistance as you go and just holding that resistance. Like as if someone was pushing against you, you weren't going to let them push you. Okay, and then coming back up as you inhale. Ah, and then inhaling the other arm up. Exhaling over into that resistance. So as if I was pushing you, you're going to resist me and holding there for just a moment. And breathing, of course. And coming back up again, another, kind of shake it out, another breath. Ah, oh, that feels good to me. We'll do a variation on that. So we'll inhale the arms up and just exhale the arms down. So we'll do that twice, just kind of normal. Without a lot of intention, inhaling up, exhaling down. And now let's reach to the fingertips. Let's just reach out with as much energy as you can out to the side as you come up and reaching out to the side as you go down. Notice how that's a little bit different for your body. Inhaling up, reaching, exhaling down. And now this time we'll imagine there's some resistance. So we're lifting and lowering our arms through thick mud, whatever you want to imagine, but there's some resistance. And we're actually creating that within our bodies. And it's um, like a little bit of strength training, a little resistance work. So really, Feeling like you're resisting something is keeping your arms down, like almost like I'm pushing down on them for you, and then resisting on the way down. And notice how that feels different. You're probably feeling different parts of your arm, your shoulders, and we'll do one more. Maybe inhaling up if it feels good. Really resisting. And exhaling. We'll take another breath. Just checking in. Close your eyes or not. <sighs> Noticing how that felt. And the pause is really nice because we can take a moment to savor what it feels like to move our bodies and just how nourishing it is and the fact that we're taking the time to do it. I think it's really helpful. And just to notice the changes. Like what feels different now in your upper body versus just a few moments ago before we started. Right? Probably some things are different. So we're going to start doing a little bit of lower body stuff so we can, you know, get that body, I mean, that part of your body moving a little bit. So we'll just simply do, and, and the wall is your friend, so feel free to grab the wall. I'm going to stay here just because of where I'm at uh, so you can still see me. But we're just going to take our feet, maybe like hips width apart, something like that. Again, no perfection. We're just doing what we can. And we're just going to simply try to lift up 
on the top of her, kind of ball of her feet, toes a little bit, and then lowering back down. So see if we can do that a few times with control. And you notice my ankles are kind of wobbly a little bit, kind of warming up. And you'll notice how this feels for you. If you don't do it very often, it might feel um, new, different, might be, might be wobbly, which is totally fine. Your body starts to learn really quickly. It's a little bit of a balance exercise too, so that's where the wall or a chair can be helpful. You can also do this elevated, like on a rolled up mat or on the stairs, and you'll get even bigger range of motion, wake up your toes and your calves really well. Let's just do it with a little variation. So let's turn our feet up, maybe widen your legs a little bit, and let's come up and go down. You can tell I don't do this one very much because it's harder. <laughs> My body is learning. Maybe even a little wider and straight now. So just some variations. So that's what's kind of fun about movement is you can really play with what you do. Nothing has to be static in one way. When we do it in one way, we're training for that one way and getting really efficient at it, which is just fine. But when you do it in other ways, it's, it's good. Novel movement is what they call it. It's good for your body because your body learns, oh, I have options. I have different ways to do these things. Okay. So let's come back to kind of a comfortable stance, whatever that is for you. And we're going to do just a little bit for our necks because I don't know what you, but <laughs> my neck always needs a little bit of love. Uh, especially these days we spend time on our phones, right? On the computer, driving, you know, um, if, if you drive. And so we have a lot of time with our heads forward. So let's just do just a little bit of a movement to, to remind you of kind of where the head can be where it has a possibility of being. So let's just take the head forward and back. So kind of from the side, it's like we often are kind of here, looking, looking down, but then we can also just bring, bring it back to where it's a little bit closer to being over our shoulders. And the motion is kind of actually like kind of forward and then back and up. So it's almost as though, like if I had a, a ponytail, I was kind of, I'd be kind of pulling my head up. So think of that traction. And if it feels helpful, you know, like touch the back of your head as you move your head forward and then back up, that might be helpful. Just to kind of get that sense. Something you might want to notice is what happens with your rib cage when you do this? Does your rib cage want to kind of do the motion instead of your head? So you could place one hand on your rib cage and just say, hey, you can just stay here, keep it stationary, and you can do this backward motion without it moving, or, or try not to have it move too much. It can be a little bad. Okay, so just shaking that up for a second. Nothing too rigid about it, but just remembering that like we can come back in space is really, is helpful. Because we were, I think, roughly designed to be stacked. Not all the time, we do things and we move in different positions, but that's an efficient place for your spine to be. So we'll take another breath, see if you notice anything different there. Hmm. I thought it felt good myself, and we'll do a little bit more next step. So, kind of staying in a little bit more that, that back step position, can we just take an ear towards the shoulder? And my neck has been a little grumpy lately, so mine's not moving all much. But just take a note of how you're feeling here to the other shoulder. Maybe inhaling up and exhaling over. So I encourage you to approach your body with kindness. It really is this like miraculous container for us, container for our spirits, and I don't know if we always think about it like that, like we want it to be different, but I think acceptance and self-care and kind of love is really helpful, personally. For me too, it's a good reminder. So now let's take the ear toward the first shoulder, whichever one that was, and see if you can extend your other arm out. And you can play with even moving the palm up and the palm down, like having that thumb spin backward and the thumb spin forward and see how that changes things. You might even, I like to often just put my opposite hand here where I feel kind of that tension. And just that little bit of a tactile cue can often encourage your neck to let go. So we can play with the arm position even. I like the thumb back position because again, we spend a lot of time thumbs forward doing things in this kind of position. And so this is our way to kind of counteract that. So can we take the thumb back if it feels okay to whatever extent works for you? Maybe play with that and just play with some different positions. Just coming forward and back. And just breathing. Feeling kind of calm, grounded again. 
And just exploring, you're kind of spelunking a little bit with your muscles. See if you can find a spot that maybe just let a little bit of movement. Maybe a sticky spot. You can also just pick a spot and then move your head around. So you can play with what does my neck really want right now? And being gentle, you know, kind. Not, not kind of forcing your neck in a certain position. Because if you're like me, maybe sometimes it gets a little bit tense. And so um, creating kind of more tension on tension isn't what we're going for. But maybe we can invite some motion. Like right there feels really good for me. And maybe I can just nod my head up and down a little bit in that position. Hmm. And take a nice breath and see if it'll shift. And often, I'll find little releases in my neck by doing this. So we'll just do another moment here, and then we'll do the other side. Awesome. So coming back, we'll shake it out a little bit. We'll take another breath and just check in and see how that feels. It's a little bit different, maybe again, enjoying that feeling of maybe a little, little uh, relaxation or just aliveness in your neck. So the other side. So we'll take the ear toward the shoulder, and then we'll extend the arm. We can play again with rotating the arm back and forth. I'm just investigating, getting curious about how it feels. And then if you want, you can do a little motion forward and back. And I'm going to take my hand over here because I like to kind of sense what's going on with my neck in these different positions and give it a little bit of love. And just having a little bit of touch often can help your nervous system know it's safe and can relax a little bit. So, just playing around with different positions. This side might be different than the other side, which is just fine. We're all a little bit different on both sides. It's kind of the fun of it. Doing that a bit, and then maybe finding a spot that feels good to stay. And then can we play around with our neck position? Maybe even notice how this side feels different from the other side. This side feels a lot different for me. And inviting some deep breaths, maybe even closing your eyes. Just kind of exploring what line, <clears throat> what area would like a little bit of love, maybe a little motion, like right here. It's Kind of feeling it for me. So I'm just going to sit here and maybe just nod my head a little bit in that spot. Do a little bit of micro motion. And we'll just stay here for another moment or two. Just exploring. Hmm, we'll come back. Again, resetting, noticing what's different. Maybe closing your eyes if you want, but we'll take a breath. Hmm. That feels great to me. I feel definitely more alive and awake on both sides. So our hands are another spot that often we forget about. <laughs> and there's no judgment there, but we can give them a little bit of love. We use them in a lot of different ways. And, and I don't know about, about you, but mine have definitely gotten a little more tight. Um, with with um, technology <clears throat> usage. So let's give them a little bit of love. So we'll do a couple little stretches. We'll make it kind of um, what they call passive stretch. So we're going to hold it and then we'll do it where we make it active or using our muscles to do the stretch, which can, I think, you know, just help balance things out and, and help you like own that, that maybe gain of flexibility. So we'll just start by lifting your palm up. I'm going to just keep my elbow kind of by my side. I'm going to lift the palm up in like a stop. Um, stop sign. So if you see it from the side, you know, it's not going super far. That's okay. And I'm just going to pull back. Gently pull back with spreading my fingers wide. I'm going to pull back with my other hand and just stay there for a couple breaths. Feel that stretch that I need. It's probably going to, you might feel the stretch through here and you might feel the stretch even on your forearm a little bit um, as well, or a little more compression on that side. And now, can we remove our hand and try to keep our keep the other hand in the stop sign position as much as possible? So we're just going to stay there. And maybe it moved a little bit, but we're making it active now. We're using the forearm to hold the hand there. 
And we'll just breathe a little bit. You might, you might feel yourself working, you might feel a little challenging, but that's okay. Your hand and your body loves it. And release it, and we'll just shake it out. You might feel, I'm feeling it pretty good. And we'll just do a couple where we're just actively coming up and down and up and down. And the motion primarily is from the wrist, not so much the elbow. So just up and down. And down. Awesome. All right. Give myself a little massage. It's a little tight. So we'll do the other side. So we'll just lift up into that stop sign. If you've got a wrist like a watch like me, you can move it a little bit if it gets in the way, or you could take it off. So keep that in mind. So we'll have the elbow kind of by the side and we'll just pull up, spread the fingers wide and pulling the fingers kind of back toward the arm. You might feel a stretch kind of through here and you can also do it in the opposite direction as well. You might feel more of a stretch in the opposite direction. We'll do this one again the same way. And then when you're ready, can we release the opposite hand that's holding and try to stay in that position. Try to stay in that stop sign as best you can for a couple breaths. Probably feeling a little bit of work in your wrist, in your forearm. It's a good step. Hmm. And shaking it out a little bit. And we'll just do a couple more, just lifting and lowering. And lifting and lowering. Awesome. All right, let's take another breath and just notice how our hands and wrists might be feeling a little bit different. Fantastic. Okay, we're gonna do a little kind of lower body hip um, movement, and I don't have anything right next to me to hold on to, but this is another great one where the wall would be a great idea. Um, actually, you know what, I'm just gonna step back and do the wall. So we can take our weight onto one leg, we'll cross the other leg over, and let's just sit back. So you're gonna probably feel a stretch kind of in this part of your body. You might feel a little bit of inner thigh, just depends on you where you're gonna feel it. And we'll just hold here for just a a little bit. Great. And then now this is kind of where it gets, gets to be a little more active. And this is where you might want to actually straighten your other leg a little bit. Can you lift up, can lift your ankle and foot off of your leg? And at the same time, keep this knee kind of pointing outward. Might be a lot. Ooh, I feel it. And you could even just do it more straight up too. Holding on to something if you like. Ah, uh, I feel a burn. Great. And can we relax back to that first stretch? And now we can press our hand against our knee, or sorry, our upper thigh above our knee, and then resist. Have your knee kind of trying to push up and your hand is pushing down. So you start to feel that part of your, your, um, your hip, your glute activated. And breathing. You do as much or as little as you want. But just waking up that part of your body a little bit. And just one more breath. Ah, and release it. And shake it out a little bit. You might be feeling a little different now. So we'll take another breath in and out. See how that is different on that other side. Hmm. Hmm. Much more alive and awake. So we'll switch sides. So same thing, feel free to hold on to something. You're gonna shift your weight over, cross your leg, and sit back. And we'll just stay here for a couple breaths. Feeling that stretch wherever you feel it, but most likely you're gonna feel it kind of in your outer, outer hip glutes. If you don't wanna use the wall, don't use the wall, but it can be different. I'm just noticing when we stretch. You know, are we picking up tension anywhere else? If so. Maybe you can soften it. Great, and now is the time when we're going to try to lift that ankle off. And this side's harder for me. And I kind of already kind of shifted quite a bit. But the idea of the knee not coming up as much, the knee is still going to be kind of tracking downward. And if you want to straighten your standing leg a little bit, that's fine. But it's so interesting how our bodies are asymmetrical, which is perfect and how it is. But this side feels so much different. Oh, I feel the burn. Okay, let's relax back down. Relaxing <laughs> is the operative word. I don't know if it's relaxing or not, but now let's do that resistance. So let's press against the upper thigh and the knee is going to be pressing into the hand. And you're probably going to feel some activation. I find myself wanting to rotate a lot that way. 
Do you feel like that too? See if you can kind of just come back to where your hip bones maybe are both pointing forward equally. So pressing, ah, feel it. Breathing. You won't want to stay here too long. And one more breath. Great. Come up. Take it out. Ah. Let's take another breath in and out and just tune in to how that felt. Maybe savor that feeling of aliveness in your hips, um, that energy that it kind of gets, did it give your body. Hmm. Fantastic. So we'll do this one more, kind of uh, one more movement on both sides for your lower body, just to wake it up a little bit. So balance is one of those things, we use it or we lose it. And you can always get it back. Your body really is very adaptable. So we're going to do a balance exercise. So let's shift our weight onto one leg. It doesn't matter which one. Again, hold on to something if you'd like to. There's no pressure, there's no judgment. But we're just going to stand on one leg. And whatever way works for you. So we're going to try to stay here until we start to feel these muscles really waking up. If you want a little more challenge, move your gaze. So look around a little bit. And you'll see me start to wobble a little bit more. Really don't look at me if you, uh, if you don't want to wobble, because looking at something that's moving typically will make it more challenging. You're bringing your eyes are part of your balance. Now, if you're holding on to something, you might want to add on to this. You could do a live swing, where you're maybe holding your pelvis with one hand and holding on to something else. And the idea is not to have your pelvis move a ton. It will move some, but can we kind of keep it from moving that much? And you're just moving your leg in relationship to your hips. So a nice little way to relax your um, hip flexors, which we Sitting is hip flexion, so it gets shortened in the front. So this is a way to relax those muscles. Great, just a couple more. Just breathing. Again, there's no judgment, no pressure. So you just kind of do what you can. Remember the first time I did this, it was pretty funny. So maybe you're giggling. And we'll switch sides. And just shake it out. So you might be noticing the work on this side. And maybe a release on this side. So taking a breath again and just tuning into that. Or whatever and however you feel. And we'll switch sides. So we'll take our weight onto this leg. However works for you. And we'll just stay here. Sometimes it takes a second to kind of get your bearing. Easiest just to keep your eyes in one spot where you're looking at one thing that's not moving. If you want to mix it up and as you get more comfortable with balance, Look around. See what happens when you look up and when you look down. I tend to like lose my balance a little more when I'm like looking up. So look to the side. You can even play around with just not moving your head, but moving your eyes. And see how that is different. Okay, so when you're ready, if you like to add on, we'll do the leg swing. So, I didn't say this a moment ago, but if you're finding you're kind of hitting the ground, you can kind of shift your hip in a little bit, and that'll give you that lift on the other side, or you can stand on something, a book, a yoga block, a stair. And again, just trying to have the leg move, not so much the pelvis forward and back, it's more so like a pendulum swinging. You can feel that relaxation, in the front of the body while the other side is working. Ah, I can feel the work. <laughs> and we're slowing it down and coming back. Fantastic. So we'll just take a moment just to tune in to what we feel in that part of our body and in our whole body. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining me for this uh, movement reset. Time to kind of tune into our bodies. I don't know about you, but I feel some energy shift in my body. I feel alive. I feel awake. <laughs> I feel kind of ready to go. Um, I hope you feel the same. If you'd like to stay connected, um, the best way to reach me and to, um, you know, uh, yeah, stay connected is my website. It's joannazaremba.com, and that's J-O-A-N-N-A. 
N-N-A, Z as in zoo, A-R-E, M as in Mary, B as in boy, A at, I'm um, sorry, A dot com. <laughs> um, I was thinking of my email address. So yeah, feel free to reach out. I've got a newsletter where I send tips and um, free videos and inspiration and things like that related to movement, mindfulness, resilience, um, parenting, kind of runs the gamut. But the idea is really to support you in feeling good, trusting yourself in this body of yours, uh, tapping into your wisdom, um, really just having the ability to you know, live a life of, of possibility. So thanks again. Hope you have a great one. We'll see you in the next video.